Okay, hi there, it's Jeff here again with another in our series of uh, industry profiles. We take a sector, in this case telecoms, we're just trying to find a little bit about it and think about why it might be relevant to your study of microeconomics. Of course, the examiners are looking for you to use industries of your own choice. So hopefully, this sector might be of interest to you micro students. The, uh, the telecom sector is big in the UK. It makes about a, well, certainly above a 30 billion contribution to our GDP each year. And uh, the average household uh, spends over nearly £80 a month on telecom services, equivalent to about 3% of average monthly household spend. So if you've got a, an all-singing, all-dancing broadband subscription, it's likely to cost you uh, quite a little bit. Basic broadband, of course, is cheaper. I want to talk about, about, the, about the telecom sector and the broadband industry in particular, uh, because it's a good example of an oligopoly. And here's the market share data for 2020. This is fixed broadband. Uh, BT, the biggest uh, firm in the market by some distance, had a 33% market share. Sky, 22%. Virgin Media, 20 So the leading three firms had 75% of the market. As we'll see in a few minutes, it's BT and Virgin Media that dominate the networks, the infrastructure that delivers broadband to uh, homes and offices and other buildings. Wholesale customers like Sky and Talk Talk, they have 32% of the market, but they basically use essentially the BT network to reach customers. And that's quite important, as we'll see in a few minutes. So this is how the share has changed. I think BT bought EE, actually, in 2016. That's why the orange disappears. And BT's share has obviously grown from 27% in 27, a bit to 33% in 2020. This is the latest data I have. Obviously, there could have been some data for 2021. But you see there, the big three firms dominate. BT, Sky and Virgin Media. They dominate the market with Talk Talk in fourth place. Uh, last year, and this is definitely worth knowing, adding to your revision notes, there was a big merger in the telecoms sector. This was actually announced in the summer of 2020, but Liberty Global, who owns Virgin Media, and Spanish group Telefonica, who owns O2, they agreed a merger to combine their UK operations to create the country's second largest broadband network, behind BT, and the largest mobile operator. And eventually, this was cleared by the Competition and Markets Authority, the Competition, uh, a watchdog, uh, Competition and Markets Authority, the watchdog for these markets. They argued that uh, there was sufficiently intense competition already with the likes of BT and um, uh, Sky for this merger not to lead to higher prices. Well, we'll see. How do, these, how do these firms compete for market share? If you've studied oligopoly, I hope you know, I'm sure you do, that uh, in any kind of imperfectly competitive market, there's always a big um, a distinction to be made between price competition and non-price competition. And I think in this kind of sector, in telecoms, it's probably non-price that dominates for most people, uh, as we'll see in a few seconds. Of course, these businesses will compete on price, the monthly tariff, the basic cost of your broadband subscription. Of course they will. But actually, for many people, I think, maybe, maybe, I, maybe I might, it's the length of contracts, it's the setup costs, it's whether they bundle in some free services like Spotify, maybe two months free Netflix, access to BT Sport or Sky Sports, etc. So the bundling of services is, is often used. And that's a mixture, by the way, of price and non-price competition. They might offer you free vouchers if you're a new subscriber or free calls. And of course, fundamentally for people, what matters is the reliability, the consistency, the quality, the average speed of network connections and the speed of downloads, whether your systems upgrade uh, quickly and easily, the software upgrades automatically. Uh, crucially, I think the customer consumer, quality of customer service is absolutely vital. You know, do, they, do they actually answer the phones after 8 o'clock in the evening? And increasingly, given that many, many more people are now working from home, uh, data security from broadband connections is particularly important as people shift their working patterns. I think this is quite a nice slide, maybe take a screenshot here, of different examples of price and non-price competition within an oligopoly. And here's just a quick snapshot. I went on to moneysupermarket.com, took a screenshot of uh, our offers from Vodafone, from Virgin Media, and from BT. Notice though, down the middle, they're offering similar prices, £22, £24, £28. Prices actually are relatively 
relatively the same for this for similar deals um, but obviously you can vary the vary what you want often in an oligopoly prices do settle at a kind of fairly consistent level the kinks demand curve helps explain that uh, and uh, businesses instead compete on the quality of service and other factors Interestingly, uh, a lot of the providers, BT, Virgin Media, etc., Sky, are now offering uh, discounted uh, broadband deals for people who are on universal credit, which is the main welfare benefit. This is quite a nice slide. Universal credit receivers can qualify for heavily discounted broadband deals from a number of providers, and uh, these are often these basic services at uh, £15 or £20 per month, well below the average, which is £79 per month per household. Universal credit, by the way, millions of people are, who are in work claim universal credit. But often the wages they earn, part-time perhaps, or low-wage jobs aren't enough to lift them off the, the, uh, the, the level where you still claim benefits. Now we're getting to a really crucial bit, so thanks for staying with me if you're still on the video. This chart basically shows the revenue flowing to BT, British Telecoms, all the way through to 21-22, the third quarter. Now this is quarterly revenue. Quarterly, sorry. So you have to multiply by four to get the annual revenue. This is a big business. Um, uh, the blue bit and the orange bit are the, the revenues from selling services to consumers and businesses. BT Global Services is in there. But look at the yellow bit. That's open reach. Now, what open reach is, is their networking division. It's a wholly owned subsidiary of British Telecom. And their job basically is to invest in the network, expand the network, provide better connections, maintain it. Uh, as, as a kind of network infrastructure provider. Now, the, the regulator Ofcom now requires BT to open up their network for access by other broadband suppliers. So they pay BT to access their infrastructure, access charges, and I think those prices may be capped. The retail prices of broadband are not capped because the regulator thinks there's sufficient competition between the final mile providers. Uh, it might be worth checking to see if the wholesale price is capped. It might be. But OpenReach is the network provider. And basically, BT and Virgin Media are the two dominant infrastructure providers. So, for example, a lot of Sky's services go through BT infrastructure, including those copper wires into, into people's homes. What's really interesting, that's the reason why I've chosen this market as a little case study for you, is the rise of the so-called alt-nets, alternative networks. So for decades, OpenReach and Virgin Media have just, have just dominated the fixed-line cable broadband network. Okay, But now, it's really interesting, loads of alt-net businesses are starting to appear. And what they do is they tend to, uh, they appear to, uh, um, to lay fibre, fibre optic cables in, in the UK, often focusing on very specific towns, cities, large villages, for example. You may have heard of City Fibre, Hyper Optic, Giga Clear, and Community Fibre. That'd be a brilliant application, wouldn't it, for an exam? Now, these businesses, they're smaller businesses, right? so they're not massively scaled organisations. They use the latest fibre optic technology, tiny threads of grass to carry modulated light along existing underground pathways, and that, of course, increases vastly the quantity of data that can be transported. Now, over 4% over of UK premises, households and businesses now have access to two or more full fibre options. So what these alt nets are doing is creating, if you like, some contestability in the market. It'd be fascinating to see what happens in the years to come. A good example for your revision notes is City Fibre, backed by £4 billion uh, from Goldman Sachs and uh, Antin Infrastructure Partners. They're their biggest investors. It's the third largest network infrastructure operator now in the UK. And it's got a big, big plans, ambitious plans to roll out full fibre infrastructure, um, uh, targeting more than 8 million homes and businesses by 2025. I'll put a link to a super little video in the comments section if you wanted to find out more about City Fibre. Here's the network map. So basically their job is to create new network infrastructure. Uh, they actually bought a business, Fibre Nation, from Talk Talk in 2020 for a tidy sum there, 213 million. So their job is to build, through phases, build locations where you have fully fledged, full fast, fast, full fibre broadband, FTTP, fibre to the property. 
since 2017, Vodafone's been a, a key partner, providing uh, you know, accessing their networks. But they've changed the agreement now so that um, Talk Talk and Zen, for example, can now access their networks. And here's some good news for people living in Yorkshire that uh, fixed wireless ISP, internet service provider Sticks Internet, has announced they're going to be bringing some fibre to the premise broadband. Another good example there. And another example of these alt networks is uh, GigaClear, deploying f um, fibre to the property broadband in Wincanton, which I think is in Somerset. So what you have, interestingly here, is a whole series of new, smaller infrastructure businesses, quite well funded, looking to try and build their own infrastructure, super fast broadband, and then get retailers, the likes of Sky or whatever it is, Talk Talk or Vodafone, to provide services through their network. So the telecom sector is changing. Here are some examinated questions. How about these ones? To what extent, to assess, sorry, to assess the possible impact of the Virgin Media O2 merger on economic agents? To what extent should the infrastructure division of BT be nationalised? Should the infrastructure be nationalised? Examine price and non-price competition strategies that broadband providers might use to increase their revenues and profits. Here's another synoptic question for you. Evaluate the micro and macro advantages of an increase in government funding for investment in superfast broadband in regions below with below average per capita incomes. And here's, a, here's an interesting one. This was proposed by Jeremy Corbyn in 2019 in the election. To what extent should fast broadband be provided free at the point of use to all UK households and businesses, paid for by a tax on the profits of internet companies such as Facebook, Google and Amazon? Wow. So those are some exam questions for you. Don't necessarily have a go at them, but have a little think about how you might want to answer them. The key point, I think, is that... Uh, oops, the airlines and airports, that's the next video. The key thing, I think, is that the telecom sector is changing and hopefully this little... Uh, industry profile video will have given you some background on that. Stay positive, stay happy, stay focused, and hopefully see you all again sometime soon.